This is VOA News. Reporting by remote, I'm David Byrd. Thirteen men in the state of Michigan have been arrested in connection with a plot to kidnap Governor Gretchen Whitmer and other top state officials. AP's Ed Donahue reports. Governor Gretchen Whitmer calls those arrested sick and depraved men. U.S. Attorney Matthew Schneider says the men are violent extremists and view Whitmer as having uncontrolled power in restricting activity because of the coronavirus. All of us in Michigan can disagree about politics. But those disagreements should never, ever amount to violence. Whitmer says she understands the frustration during the pandemic. You don't have to agree with me, but I do ask one thing. Never forget that we are all in this together. Authorities say some of the men in Michigan said they belonged to or were associated with Wolverine Watchmen, which the government describes as a militia group. I'm Ed Donahue. The fate of the final debates between President Donald Trump and Democrat Joe Biden was thrown into uncertainty Thursday as the campaigns offered dueling proposals for moving forward with the face-offs that have been upended by the president's coronavirus infection. The day began with an announcement from the Nonpartisan Commission on Presidential Debates, which said that the next debate, set for October 15th in Miami, would be held virtually. Trump, who is eager to return to the campaign trail despite uncertainty about his health, said he would not participate if the debate was not in person. Biden's campaign suggested the event be delayed a week until October 22nd, which is when the third and final debate is already scheduled. Trump countered again, agreeing to a debate on October 22nd, but only if it were face-to-face and asking for a third contest on October 29th. Biden's advisors rejected squaring off that late in the campaign. This is VOA News. Azerbaijan and ethnic Armenians fought with artillery and heavy guns Thursday as the United States, France and Russia stepped up efforts to secure a ceasefire and avert a wider war in the South Caucasus. We get more from Lucy Fielder of Reuters. Tanks, heavy artillery and warplanes have been deployed in a week and a half of fierce clashes. The United States, France and Russia are to talk to the Azeri side in Geneva than the Armenian one in Moscow to try to avert a wider war in the South Caucasus. With fears Turkey, which supports Azeri forces, is being pulled in. Hours before talks were due to start on Thursday, Azerbaijan accused Armenian forces of shelling the city of Ganja, which lies deep within its territory and not in the disputed enclave. Civilians were fired on in the Gorenvoy region and in other towns and villages, it said. Both sides accuse each other of firing on civilian areas, including ones outside the breakaway enclave. Hundreds of people have been killed. That's Reuters' Lucy Fielder. Hurricane Delta is growing more powerful and threatening to hit Louisiana as early as Friday. The Category 3 storm is headed across the Gulf of Mexico toward the Texas-Louisiana border. At a news conference, National Weather Service meteorologist Ben Schott says Delta is expected to bring storm surge along the coast and significant impacts to most of Louisiana. Damaging hurricane force winds will be impacting a a good portion of southwest Louisiana. Uh, We will have heavy rainfall and some bands that will set up Uh, So there'll be some areas with isolated uh, flash flooding and and possible river flooding on the other side of that. Delta is following a path that would put it close to Lake Charles, Louisiana, an area which is still recovering from a devastating hit from Hurricane Laura in August. American poet Louise Glick has won the Nobel Prize in Literature for her candid and uncompromising work. Reuters' Olivia Chan reports. The 77-year-old Yale professor first rose to critical acclaim with her 1986 collection of poems entitled First Born. She went on to become one of the most celebrated poets in contemporary America, winning multiple U.S. literary awards, including the U.S. Pulitzer Prize in 1993. While she draws on her own experiences in poetry, Glug, who was twice divorced and suffered from anorexia in her younger years, explores universal themes that resonate with readers in the United States and abroad. That's Reuters' Olivia Chan. Reporting by remote, I'm David Byrd, VOA News.